Even a quarter inch in head design makes a big difference in how it looks on you. In this video, I'll show you how easily you can make a bucket hat in exactly the way you want. First, I measured my head circumference. Add half inch to one inch for the fabric thickness and wearing ease. In order to make the calculation easier, I'll use 23 inches for the finished hat measurement. Divide 23 by 4 and you get 5 and 3 quarters. The hat has side seams and center front is going to be on fold. I'm going to draft this quarter section of the brim first. Draw a line that is 5 and 3 quarters of an inch long. Then draw another line 3 inches long perpendicular to the first line. Then draw a rectangle. Then fold the rectangle into 4. Cut the folded line close to the edge but not cutting through it. First, I'm going to do this narrow brim. Draw the center front line and measure a quarter inch from that line. Place the corner of the rectangle at the point and place another corner at the center front line. Add half inch gaps to all the folded lines you just cut and at the end of the rectangle, add quarter inch to match the center front. The reason why I added quarter inch at the ends is because when you cut this shape on fold at the center front, you get half inch total at the center front. So that was how I drafted this narrow brim. To draft this wider brim than this one, I'm going to double the amount I add in these sections. I add half inch at the center front, one inch each between these cut pieces, and half inch at the end. I folded the paper at the center fold line and transferred the mirror image on the other side. I'm going to cut two pieces from this pattern for the front brim and the back brim. I made the paper mockups of the brims so that I could see how they look. I transferred the pattern to the new paper and added half inch to the inside curve of the brim. Cut some slits so that I could wear them on my head. This is the one with half inch gaps and I think it looks pretty good. I think this is the standard bucket hat look. And this is the one with one inch gaps. I think this is more like a sun hat than a bucket hat. Now moving on to the side of the crown. I'm going to draft the quarter section of the side crown. I'm going to use this measurement first, which was 5 and 3 quarters. Then I measured the height of the crown of the hat that looks good on me, which was 3 and half inches. Then make a rectangle like before and fold it into four like before so that we can manipulate the shape. To make this top part shorter than the bottom of the crown, we do the reverse procedure of the brim, which is to overlap the cut sections to make it smaller. Start by placing the bottom corner of the rectangle at the center front line. Tilt the top corner to the right one eighth of an inch. 
overlap quarter inch at every slit. And come in 1 8 of an inch at the end. Again, this is half of what I overlap on every slit. So when you connect all the pieces, the shaping is distributed evenly across the entire circumference of the crown. Measure along the top edge of the crown. This came out to be 4 and 3 quarters. So this corresponds to this on this graphic. So we are going to multiply 4 and 3 quarters by 4 to get the circumference of the top of the crown, which came out to be 19 inches. Before I move on to drafting the top of the crown, I folded the paper at the center front line to mirror the piece on the other side to make the entire front and back side crown pattern. Here I'm measuring 3 inches with my compass to get a circle with 19 inch circumference. The calculation is that the circumference you want to get divided by 3.14 then divide that diameter by 2. That's how I got my 3 inches. Then I make a circle and I went ahead and added half inch seam allowance. I figured it's easier to do it now with my compass. Here are all the pattern pieces I made. The pattern for the top of the crown, which I gave half inch seam allowance to and the pattern for the side of the crown, the pattern for the brim. I made a mock-up of the entire hat with cotton muslin. I had to hold up my brim because it was only one layer. I really like the hat shape, but for this particular project, I wanted a little bit wider brim. So I went ahead and repeated the process with 5 eighths of an inch gaps between slits. And this is a mock-up. This was more in line with what I wanted to make. I was 10% unsure because of the floppy brim of the mock-up, but I decided to use this pattern for the brim. I had two pieces of fabric which measured 12 inches by 36 inches. These are leftovers from another project, so I'm making a matching hat for the dress. This linen fabric is pretty wiggly, so I carefully placed the edge of the fabric along with one of the lines on my cutting mat. Then I placed the center front line of the pattern in the middle of one of the white stripes of the fabric. Then I carefully placed two top corners at the bottom of the gray border. Then I cut out with half inch seam allowance. One of my tricks to pattern matching gingham fabric is to cut out one piece at a time. Then use that piece as a template to cut out another piece. Place the cut piece on the fabric so the piece disappears into the background that way you know patterns are matching exactly. Then cut out another piece using the piece you just cut out as a pattern. I cut out lining pieces from the bottom of cotton curtain I chopped off. Then I put interfacing to all the pieces. I usually interface one big piece then cut out hat pieces, but I only had small pieces of interfacing left, so I had to cut out one by one. My mystery interfacing from my stash was melting at the temperature I was using, 
And also I couldn't find my usual pressing cloth, so I used parchment paper for the first time. And I thought it worked, but the interfacing started coming off later, so I would not recommend using parchment paper as a pressing cloth. Here are all the pieces I cut out. Also, all the pieces are interfaced. I didn't have big piece of interfacing, so I had to use my interfacing like a puzzle. Some places in the seam allowance are missing interfacing. It's okay if the seam allowance is not completely covered. Also, I patched this corner. And there are also some places I burned with my iron, but it looked okay on the right side, so I decided to keep this piece. As you can see, some of my pieces look kind of ugly inside, but I think the final hat came out nicely, so I'd say don't stress over perfection. First, I saw all the side seams. I like to batch sew like this to save my thread and also this way the sewing machine foot is kept leveled because of the last section you sewed is holding up the back of the machine foot. So it's easy to start off the next section nicely. Open the seam allowances and stitch them down from the right side of the fabric. Stay stitch at the top of the crown side. This width should be just a hair smaller than half inch seam allowance. I forgot to mark the center front and the center back, but you can do this at this point like this. To attach the crown top to the crown side, pin in four places center front, center back, and two sides. Then only on the seam allowance of the top of the crown side, clip every half inch or so very close to the stitching line but not cutting through the stitching line. About 1 eighth of an inch away from the stitch is a good ballpark. Bring the edges together as you sew and stitch right next to and inside of the stay stitch. Lay the seam allowances toward the side of the crown and stitch down all the seam allowances from the right side of the head. Trim the seam allowances into half of the width. And do the same thing to the lining pieces. Stitch down the seam allowances of the side seams of the brim. Place one on top of the other and sew outside of the brim with half inch seam allowance. Fold the seam allowances at the stitch toward the bottom brim.
doing this before flipping right side out to actually speed up the process. When you flip the pieces inside out, the seam is already at the edge. This way, it's easy to press like this, so you can see the seam from the bottom brim but not from the top. I decided to do the stay stitching and clipping of the seam allowances here too. This is what's left of the fabric. I cut out the longest pieces possible for the side straps. At a sharp corner, take one stitch diagonally and cut off the excess seam allowance. Press seam allowances to one side, for the reason I explained earlier. This is just what I thought might work and tried for the first time. Using a short piece of button thread, I took one stitch from the inside really close to the corner. I tried to pass the needle through the fabrics without catching any fabric and came out on one side. I left both of the ends of the thread hanging freely inside and flip the strap inside out. From outside, I pulled out the end of the thread and grabbed both of them and pulled to bring out the corner. I will try not to pull too tight here so that you don't pull out the corner out of shape. Place the straps at the sides and pin them in place. And try the hat on and if you like the placement of the straps, go ahead and machine baste them in place. For the sizing ribbon, I use Grosgrain or Petersham ribbons. Make it to the size of the finished hat measurement. In my case, it is 23 inches. Then place the edge at the stitching line and stitch very close to the edge to attach the ribbon to the seam allowances. You can leave the seam allowances inside like this or you can serge your zigzag to make it neat. You can also sew the ribbon in couple places to keep it in place.